Welcome back to Five Acres Honey Farm. I'm Tara Lynn, and if you're new here, um, this channel is about uh, beekeeping, permaculture, a little bit of exploring North Carolina, and um, also raising um, quail, raising chickens, layers. Um, right now we have our, for the first time, some Idaho pasture pigs, so I have um, some content related to that and our experience learning about managing them and gardening, of course, as well. I mentioned permaculture, but gardening also on, on other levels um, outside of uh, the grander scale of permaculture practices. Right now, I'm on my way um, leaving to head out. It's a little bit about a three hour drive um, to Asheville, North Carolina, and I am going to a butchering workshop tomorrow. And originally the workshop, um, it's for home butchering, was going to walk through the process of butchering a hog which I'm interested in um, the two Idaho pasture pigs that we have. We are not going to process them ourselves. They already have their processing date scheduled. They'll be managed in a, a USDA facility. But I am interested in this process because maybe many years down the road, maybe this is something that we want to manage ourselves at some point. So I had signed up for this course and I just got an email that because of the weather, it's not going to really be um, good weather for um, hanging a hog. So we're actually gonna be doing sheep instead, which is another animal that I'm interested in getting at some point. So this isn't like a total loss in that way. I don't know yet if I can record any footage there. So um, the rest of this video will just kind of uh, be dependent on what we're allowed to, um, to take photos and video of, um, but I'll share as much as I can. I made it to Asheville and just gonna stop in the Asheville Beach Armor. It's the morning of the workshop and I just arrived and this is the ewe that we will be processing. And there's also a ram that will be processed as well. Um, so she has a lame leg and really can't walk too well. This is the ram that one of the participants brought. These are the pigs that got an extra day since the weather didn't work out. We had some cute Anatolian shepherds keeping us company all day. The U and Ram are on the tractor on their way up. We're getting started with the Ram first before we do the U um, because the person who brought it is going to be leaving earlier. The instructor held up call fat, which I had never heard about before. I got to the butcher workshop and it was um, a pretty cloudy uh, morning. And I learned after I'd been there for a bit that it's actually a 100 acre farm that the uh, workshop instructor um, is currently leasing on a 10 year lease. There was um, a dirt driveway that went up with some goats on one side, pigs on the other, with some sheep in another space. What was really surprising to me was that um, when we kind of did introductions, uh, a lot of folks were actually really new, um, if not completely, like actually not even into raising their own food yet. And, and I was surprised because I thought like this type of uh, workshop would be attracting folks that were maybe raising food, but they aren't processing them yet, similar to um, a little bit, or at least like larger animals, like for me that I haven't um, processed yet, that that would be majority of kind of the audience for it. But um, it's actually people that were just really interested in knowing where their food comes from. And they haven't um, raised animals yet. So it was really great uh, to see that there's that much um, interest and drive for someone to, to spend a full day um, on a farm uh, for a workshop like this. There was a social media policy that was passed around um, for each participant to sign. And I don't know if some folks didn't sign it or did sign it, and I didn't want to um, you know, make anyone uncomfortable. Plus that policy was specifically between the student and the organization that planned the workshop, um, which is the Firefly, the Firefly Gathering, sorry. And I will put a link to the Firefly Gathering in the description. Uh, they have an annual event in Western North Carolina every summer. And throughout the year, they do a bunch of different workshops. And this is one of the workshops that they had facilitated. Because of that, kind of the nuance of that policy and just not knowing the comfort level of folks and um, you know, not having their permission and not really, um, you know, I didn't inquire with different people if, if they minded if I shared on Instagram or YouTube or, or whatnot. So um, instead, um, I cropped the photos and I've just, you know, pretty much shared photos of the animals in, instead. And if you, um, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, uh, my handle is Tara Lynn with the number zero. 
and um, it's T-A-R-A-L-Y-N-N-E. And I actually had some, in a weird twist of um, conversations and events, I had a connection with a bee, um, not really, not a beekeeper, but a little bee symbol here. So this, um, this hat, um, Bethany, who organized this, the workshop through the Firefly Gathering, we were chatting in the afternoon and I was telling her about, um, I, tell, I told her I liked her hat. This is her, her actual hat. Like this isn't like a hat that's similar to one she was wearing. This is the hat right off her head. And um, she told me she got it at Honey and the Hive, which is a beekeeping supply store in downtown Weaverville really close to where this workshop was. And I told her I really loved that shop and I had bought a t-shirt there earlier this year. And um, I had attended the Organic Grower School several years ago where the owner of Honey and the Hive, um, and I'm totally blanking on her name right now. I usually know her name off the top of my head. I think it was Sarah McKinney, if I'm remembering correctly. Yes, Sarah McKinney is I'm like, yes, I'm pretty sure that's her name. Um, so she had um, she had run that that shop, and she gave this amazing presentation um, about natural beekeeping at the Organic Rower School conference. And there was a slide that she shared, which I actually now in my presentations about natural beekeeping, um, you know, at the time I was just getting started with bees and and learning a lot, but but now that been doing this for a while, um, you know, I make sure whenever I'm chatting about um, natural beekeeping that I have a slide that I've designed very similar to the one I remember seeing in hers, which made a very big impression on me. And she had a slide of um, a dog that looked really, really sick. I mean, just like skin and bones. It just looked miserable and, and, and helpless. And she explained that that's a dog suffering um, from heartworm disease. And she likened um, deciding not to treat or help a dog in that condition to the same as if you're managing a, a beehive and they have a varroa infestation and you're feeling like, you know what, they'll figure things out, they know what they're doing, I'm not gonna intervene, I'm not gonna treat. She made the similarity that um, that she made the the connection that those two um, approaches were pretty much the same thing. Like if you've got a, a sick hive and you're not being responsible in treating them, it's the same thing as if you were being um, negligent with, with a dog. Um, I know some beekeepers don't share this perspective, but it really was such a strong image and a, such, such a strong idea um, that it connected with me. And I want to carry that on. And I particularly want to carry that on because um, not long after I saw her present at the conference, um, she was killed in a fatal, um, well, it was fatal, so she she was killed, um, in a car accident um, on the, the 240 um, interstate around um, Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, and and I remember when I learned that news, like it really, really devastated me. And her, her dog had been in the car with her at the time. And I believe it was found like a day or two later with a, a broken leg or some bones. Um, and just knowing how passionate she was and how strong that image had stayed with me. I'm going off on a whole tangent here. I know this video is about a butcher workshop, but, but this is also a channel with beekeeping topics. So I know that um, folks watching are also interested in bees. Um, but because of that, um, that event, you know, I do share that story and I wanted to share that, that here too. And so after um, my little chat with Bethany, she's like, you really deserve this hat. And so she, she gave it to me, which is so generous and I love it. And I was actually tempted to like go to Honey in the Hive on my way home and get the hat. I wasn't sure if they were gonna be open that day, but, um, but it's really nice. So I'm going to be sending Bethany a thank you note and also making sure that I reserve a jar of honey from a future harvest for her um, because this really was so, so, so sweet. Um, but in any case, I know this is about the butchery workshop. So that was one little tidbit um, that I wanted to share. Another piece that I wanted to share is that um, I was, after watching um, the, the ram and the ewe get processed, 
the the U, I believe, was maybe 60 pounds. There was no official weighing. It was just a, um, a judgment based on um, the folks that had been picking her up and moving her around. That doesn't seem very intimidating to me. Like, processing a hog that's several hundred pounds, that's pretty intimidating. Plus, I do pretty much all of the animal care myself. So looking, you know, trying to understand ways of how this whole process is managed. I, I felt a lot better um, after taking the workshop that I could actually do this on my own if I chose to um, to raise sheep um, at some point, which is, is on the list. Actually, after seeing, after seeing them processed at the workshop and how, I don't want to say how little meat, but you know, at live weight, if she was 60 pounds, like once she's broken down, I mean, are you getting like 20 pounds, maybe 30, if that, pounds of meat? Like it's just, I'm just trying to think from my perspective of like, well, is that going to be worth for us to spend the time and investment in raising sh raising sheep when you're getting so little? But it also makes me appreciate more how expensive it is when I do buy lamb, where I'm like, wow, this is super expensive. But now seeing um, the size of them, it like makes sense. Like they're taking up probably just as much room as some pigs might take up on someone's property and they're not producing as much meat. So there has to be a correlation there with the, with the pricing. I have a deeper appreciation for that now, but also just kind of thinking for our purposes and for our family needs of like, well, how, is this gonna be, is it gonna be worth it for us? Or is it just better for me to support a local farm that's you know, raising some sheep? I don't have any other workshops um, on the calendar in this vein. Um, I am, um, I just got this week, um, the Organic Grower School Conference, which I was just chatting about with the, with the, uh, the beekeeper um, story. Um, that the dates for that have opened. I have a, another video about why I love that conference so much and also a recap of this year's conference. So I'll link those in the description and I'll also link the registration details for the 2024 conference. I will definitely be there. So if you are planning to go to that conference, um, let me know and it'd be great to meet up and, and chat. So thanks for, for watching and I hope you learned a little bit whether about butchery or bees and, uh, um, I'll share more next time.